by Yuka Ogino, Group Manager from Janssen Pharmaceutical Company, Johnson & Johnson, Japan. So before we start, I'm just going to uh, explain the house rule to the people on Zoom. So first off, uh, please keep your microphone off so it will avoid any unwanted noises and then change your name as the screen uh, with your Venusian ID and then your full name. And if you have any question during the presentation, please write it in the chat box. If you can, please join us with your camera open so we can see your presence. Now to start off the discussion, our moderator today is Ibu Nuru, Dr. Nuru Nunung Komaria. She's the subject content coordinator from Computer Science Program. She has PhD in Computer Science from University of York, United Kingdom in 2018. So Bu Nuru, the time is yours, thank you. Thank you, Miss Mita. Okay, good morning, everyone. Good morning, uh, my student in Zoom. Can you hear my voice? Yes, okay, very nice. Okay, um, so this is very special session today. Um, we have guest lecture coming from Japan. It's Yuka Ogino, which is currently a group manager of Solid Tumor Therapeutic Area Group within Commercial Excellence Department at Janssen Pharmaceutical, where she oversees strategic recommendations, market research, omnichannel execution, and data analytics to elevate solid tumor brands a competitiveness. She holds a bachelor degree in statistics from University of California, Berkeley, United States of America. Please welcome Ms. Yuka Ogino. Time is yours. Hi, Nuru, and hi, everyone. Thank you so much for having me here today. Um, so I will be sharing my screen. Let me pull that up for you all. OK, I think you can see it now. Um, so thank you, Nuru, for introducing me. Um, so today, I would like to cover the topic of how data science plays a role within industries. And I hope that uh, some of you uh, may have an aspiring aspirations to become a data scientist one day. So hopefully this presentation can give you some insight on what you need and what you need to think about when considering a career in data science. And to do that, I would like to cover these topics today. Um, the main part is really sharing with you my journey in data science and then sharing with you the prospects of a data science career. And then lastly, we'll do some Q&A if you have any questions uh, regarding my presentation or anything else uh, involving data science career. All right, so I know Nuru already introduced me, but uh, before we jump right in, I just wanted to say hello. Um, as Nuru already mentioned, that I am currently based in Tokyo, Japan. Unfortunately, I couldn't be there with you all uh, in person. I would have loved to visit, but uh, allow me to join remotely from Tokyo. I'm currently working at Janssen Pharmaceutical of Johnson & Johnson, and my background is mainly in data science, data analytics, uh, consulting, and strategy. And I started my career at, in data science in the very beginning of my journey. I was quite exposed to data science from actually my undergrad uh, journey at U University of California, Berkeley, uh, study, studying statistics. And I realized that there was so much data in the world that could be utilized to benefit people, communities, and companies, and so forth. And so that is why I jumped in and started my career in data science. Um, so before we start the heart of the presentation, I would love to do a little icebreaker to get all of you engaged. Um, and please join me on Mentimeter. Uh, you can scan this QR code here, or I will put up the link to Mentimeter in the chat box. 
uh, please let me know if you cannot access it. Um, we were able to test the links. So I think you'll be okay. So I will give you all 30 seconds to kind of scan the QR code and or uh, access via this link. All right, I guess some of you are there. You guys are fast. Um, thank you so much. And so just going back uh, to what I mentioned about how there's so much data in the world today, right? So I wanted to get your insight on how much data do you think would exist by the end of this year? No cheating. Don't look at the internet. I know you have access to the internet nowadays. <laughs> um, but I will give you guys about 20, 20 more seconds um, to get involved. I All right, I think we have a similar, oh wow, it's a tie. Oh, okay, never mind. Um, many of you are selecting 25 trillion terabytes the most, but it's quite on par with 95 billion terabytes. Okay, I'll give you a few seconds more for any of the folks joining in, but I think we have your answer. Um, so I'd like to move forward with the actual answer. So I think these two were the most uh, selected out of the four, but uh, the correct answer is 95 billion terabytes. So that's a lot of a lot of um, data. <laughs> and by the end of oh, thank you <laughs> for selecting 95 billion terabytes. <laughs> But and anyways, so by the end of this year, there'll be almost close to 100 billion terabytes, right? Um, but the end of 2025, I will go back to my presentation. There will be about 163 zettabytes uh, in world, world worldwide data by 2025, and I kind of, you know not tricked you, but uh, I didn't write zettabytes in the Mentimeter, but zettabyte equals 1 billion terabytes. And can you even imagine how much data that is? Um, just to give you an idea, apparently it is uh, like watching an entire Netflix catalog 489 million times. <laughs> That's an incredible number. I don't think I can watch an entire Netflix catalog once um, in my lifetime. So imagine watching that 489 million times, that's just unimaginable number. Um, and so with that, I would like to get into the main topics of today. Just remember that there's a lot of data and it will only continue to increase. That means there are a lot of possibilities and opportunities to utilize the data for good use, especially in industry. And so with that, I would like to get into the journey of my journey in data science. And this is kind of the high level view of my career journey so far. Um, I, as I mentioned that I studied statistics uh, at UC Berkeley um, and I wanted to use my statistics and data analytics background, but I didn't necessarily know which industry uh, to work in. So I thought the best choice would be, you know, a role that would allow me to work in different industries. And that led me to working at SAS Institute, where I worked as an analytical consultant uh, working on data science projects. And after that, uh, I joined my current company, uh, Janssen Pharmaceutical of Johnson Johnson, uh, as a senior analyst. And now I'm more of a people manager role. Um, so I manage a group of BI managers, strategists, and uh, people working kind of marketing execution. And so with that, I would like to kind of get into two companies I worked in, SAS and Pharma, and kind of show, how, show you how data science is utilized in these industries. So, um, as I mentioned, I started my data science career uh, through consulting at SAS. 
And this was really the starting point. And what I did at SAS was that I had to provide solutions to solve business problems and set challenges that our clients were facing uh, using client data and data science. And this has allowed me to learn that data science is really applied in all the industries. And I had the privilege of working uh, with many uh, com companies in different industries from manufacturing to finance to e-commerce. So this is just an example. It's not an exhaustive list, uh, but just to give you an idea of how data science plays in different uh, industries, I can walk you through some examples. One is manufacturing. So for example, uh, a manufacturing company has many machines, right? And these machines aren't perfect, so they'll cause errors. But that error could also uh, put a stop in operations. And that would mean, you know, delaying the timeline, deadlines, and they wouldn't be able to produce products on time. And that is a problem for this business. So that means that's the business problem that we want to solve. And so to solve that, we would create a prediction model that predicts when the error would occur so that the company would know ahead of time if they need to do like a checkup or fix some errors uh, to ensure that these machines run smoothly for a certain time. And so this led to an improvement in operational efficiency. And another example is in retail. So as you know that if you go into a store, let's say for a grocery store, there are a lot of products, right, on display that you can select and buy, but they're actually inventory, let's say, in the back of the building, and there's only a certain amount of space that you can hold your products in. And one thing about grocery stores is that the food expires, right? And if it expires, you have to throw it away, which is a lot of waste. But they wanted to fix the problems of, you know, increasing waste and also the cost of inventory. And so what you would do here is to do demand forecasting where you can forecast the demand of different products, and then you can optimize the inventory space so that the cost of these products would minimize. And another example would be pharmaceutical. I, I will dive into this more later, so I will just give you insight, but pharmaceutical products are usually uh, promoted through a marketing. And we don't want to be doing something that's not efficient, that's not impactful. So we would measure the impact of different marketing channels. And then we would, you know, optimize that resource allocation through that data analysis. And so this isn't, as I said, the only thing we did, but it's just one of the few examples that data science plays a role in different industries. And I have worked on many projects through SAS, and the learning from SAS was that um, data science is, just, is applicable where enough data is available. Uh, obviously, sometimes clients would come to us and say, we have 100 data points, can we do some like prediction model? <laughs> That's not enough. Um, so there needs to be enough data, but when there's enough data, you can apply data science. Second is clarify expectations and assumptions between clients and consultants. Uh, you have to remember that when you're a data scientist, not everyone is a data scientist and not everyone knows statistics. So uh, you need to make sure that expectations and assumptions are aligned across everyone so you can have a smooth project. And lastly, to be detail oriented. Um, I think many of you are computer science majors, so you do a lot of programming, I'm sure. Uh, but one small mistake can cause a huge mistake sometime. And if you're detail oriented, you can, you know, stop spending so many hours on one little error that could have been fixed earlier on. So these are kind of the learnings that I learned from SAS. And I continue to utilize all my experiences um, and build on my skills to become a better data scientist throughout my career. And so with that, I ended my journey at SAS and entered uh, Janssen Pharmaceutical, which is my current company. And this is where I really honed in and applied my expertise. Um, 
And I wanted to get into healthcare because I've always been interested in in helping people improve their lives and improve their health. And I wanted to be able to be a factor in contributing to society. Um, and so my experience at Janssen Pharmaceutical was that I had to translate uh, information from the data into actionable insights that could solve the company's business challenges. And one of the challenges that I had coming from SaaS slash consulting was that instead of someone else coming to us with a problem already in hand, uh, we had to identify a business challenge and then find a way to solve that challenge through data. And so where do data scientists come in? This is not just in pharmaceutical, but overall in industries, data scientists are the key into translating large amounts of data into information that industries can use to solve a business problem. And especially in pharmaceutical, uh, there are various ways that it can be utilized uh, from sales and marketing to research and development, and also for patient and many more. And for sales and marketing, as I mentioned uh, previously, that we promote or we promote these products. And so we want to be able to maximize the impact of our promotional activity. So we utilize data science to do that. Second, uh, research and development. A lot of drugs um, are in clinical trials and we, we spend a lot of time developing these drugs. So we want to be able to reduce the cost and split it, speed up clinical trials and drug discovery so we can provide these um, drugs to the patient. And for patients, uh, we don't necessarily promote the products to patients, but uh, we want to also, you know, improve the experience of pharmaceutical drugs uh, through like apps and analyzing, predicting, you know, when the best time a patient should take, let's say, a pharmaceutical product. And by having that better experience, patients uh, can really have a better life um, overall. But as I mentioned, there are a lot of ways that data can be used in pharmaceutical. There's still challenges in pharma. And that is the limitation of available data that we could use uh, due to laws and regulation. So I think you may know pharmaceutical products, obviously, you know, there are side effects or um, it could cause, if it's not used in the right way, it could cause the severe action, reaction, et cetera. So there's a lot of laws and regulations around pharmaceutical. And we can't get direct patient data. So we do have to kind of be creative um, in a way so that we can use the data that we have now to solve a business problem. Second um, is about the need for investment in data management. Um, we, you know, across pharma companies, we are investing in data management, but there's still a lot of data that needs to be digitized and organized in the databases and on the cloud because some of them are still in Excel. I think we're a little bit behind uh, companies like tech companies, uh, et cetera. So there's definitely opportunities there, but if, it's, if there's not much um, investment in data management, it's really hard for data scientists to use data and actually implement um, machine learning models. And lastly, uh, is the underuse of advanced analytics in data science. So as I mentioned, I think compared to other industries, pharma and healthcare is a little bit behind in terms of the use of advanced analytics. And in a way, there's so much data that we could use, but no one's really using it in the right way. And this is one of the challenges we have because most people who don't know data science won't really know how to use it. Um, so I think that's where really the importance of data scientists come in so they can really se uh, select the, and identify the business challenge and then find ways to solve it through data science. And I know I'm currently working at Janssen Pharmaceutical so far, uh, but there, this is just one of the learnings I've had uh, from the couple of years I've been working here. One is that statistics can be deceiving. Uh, you can see on the comic on the right-hand side below, there's a chart of sales data and shaved heads. 
And the business uh, people are saying that, oh, we found a correlation in the data. Everyone take a razor. That they think that shaved heads is correlated to sales, which means that increase in shaved heads would mean increase in sales. Um, and they don't know that obviously correlation doesn't mean causation. So this, you know, statistics can be misused. So I've seen that across industry so many times. I think it's really important for data scientists to step in and correct uh, and make sure that statistics are used correctly. Second is really the, no, there's not just one correct solution for a business problem. I think there's different way to, ways to approach problem, which is like uh, one of the beautiful things about data science. You can really use your uniqueness and tackle different challenges and from your own perspective. And lastly, uh, which is the most important one, is being able to translate data science into business is very important. Um, as I mentioned, not everyone knows data science, not everyone knows statistics, and you can be very technical. You, know, you can know what you're talking about, but if it's not really translated into, you know, words and communication that other can, people can understand, it can't be utilized to the maximum. So it's very important to make sure that uh, you can communicate um, data science to be used into business. So through my two experiences in data science, uh, one at SAS Consulting and at Janssen, I think, I hope you were able to see some ways that data scientists can play a role in industries. Um, so with that, I would like to go into the prospects of data science career. Um, I think by now you saw that there's a plethora of opportunities for data scientists to play a role uh, in different companies. Uh, but you should also know that that's, it's only going to increase, right? Um, first of all, you can see on this presentation slide deck here that there's about 11.5 million data science jobs to be created globally uh, by 2026. Um, and if you want, you can become one of them. I think there's so much need, and I think you saw in the beginning of the presentation that only data will only increase, which means the need for data scientists will only increase as well. And there are many companies. I think most companies in the world today are hiring data scientists. It's not just in tech companies, it's in insurance companies like MetLife. It could be e-commerce. It could be a car company like Toyota. And really, like, there's so many opportunities for you to explore. And I think with data science, um, there are many terms for data science roles. And it could be a bit uh, confusing because different roles have different responsibilities, but it could also be just coined the term as a data scientist. So it's very important for you to read the job description if you are going into industry to understand the role, what the role is and understand you know, what the role is actually accounted for. So data scientists could be coined a term from data analyst, to business analyst, to software engineer, to machine learning engineer. Um, and I think some questions that you may have is that data analysts and business analysts seem similar, right? Um, but for data analysts, I think they're more about analyzing the data and extracting insights to be used. And business analysts takes it one step further and utilizing the insights gained from the data analysis and applying it to recommend solutions to solve a business problem. And here, data scientists can, is mostly uh, coined the term for those who are really processing large amounts of data, so big data, essentially, and applying machine learning models. So what skills are needed as data scientists? I think you saw that there are different kinds, types of roles uh, within the umbrella term of data science, but these five skills are really critical in becoming a data scientist. Uh, one is business acumen, uh, two is mathematical thinking, third is machine learning, and fourth is being able to process big data. Fifth is really your programming and skills. As you saw that uh, in industries, you have to be able to translate uh, business problems and data solutions. So you do need business acumen. So mathematical thinking, this is one of the foundations of statistical theory. 
So you should have that in order to be able to implement data science. And for machine learning, obviously this is the foundation for solving problems through data. You need to be able to apply and implement these tools. And with big data, you need to be able to process large amounts of information through data cleansing and you know, do exploratory analysis, data visualization, et cetera. And lastly, programming. I think, as I, I think many of you are programming, uh, you can do programming because you guys are computer science majors, but programming is also essential to becoming a data scientist. So I think these are kind of five skills you should keep in mind before exploring uh, your career in data science. So I, I think, you know, with data becoming increasingly important to companies, data scientists are some of the most valuable individuals in the professional world today. And so before you start, you know, taking the time to consider your options, your careers, I know you may have some time before graduation, um, you should probably ask these three questions before taking a step into a data science career. Uh, what do I like about working with data? How do I approach problems? Where do I want to put my skills to use? If you don't like working with data, I think data science career may be out the uh, door. Um, so just know that what, what do you like to do? Do you want to be more of a data engineer, uh, working more with databases and data? Do you want to you know, analyze data, et cetera? Second, how do I approach problems? Are you the type of people who like solving problems? Do you like that challenge? Because as I mentioned, there's no one size fits all solution. So you need to be unique um, and you need to you know, use those problem thinking, problem solving skills uh, to approach these problems and don't give up essentially, because sometimes you don't get an answer right away. So you have to be able to have that tenacity to solve problems. And third, where do I want to put my skills to use? Um, as I mentioned, you know, first I didn't know where I want to put my statistics skills to use. So I joined consulting, right? Um, and you don't need to know this immediately, but I, you know, wanted to work in healthcare and, and wanted to be of help uh, to people. So I got into healthcare. So I think it's really important also to ask yourself, like, where do you want to see yourself? Like, what are you interested? In? Where do you see yourself uh, thriving? So these are kind of the questions that uh, you could ask yourself before uh, or even during while you're considering your career in data science. Um, so with that, this is the end of my presentation. Um, hopefully you were able to get insight on how data scientists can play a role in industries, and what are the prospects of becoming a data science and what skills are needed to prepare yourself because uh, essentially you need to be able to apply everything that you learn in university and outside of university um, and work towards your goal of becoming a data scientist. Okay. So with that, uh, I would like to hand this back to Nuru uh, for the Q&A session. Thank All you right. so much. Thank you, Yuka. Very nice presentations. Okay, um, I would like to introduce you my colleague, um, Ida Bagus, which is also, who also teaching data science. So we do team teaching um, with the parallel class. Okay, so this is the time for discussion. Please, students from Zoom or from on site who wants to ask question, please mention your name. Yeah. And then I will take notes. Yeah. Probably Sir Bagus and me will give you some points if he agree. Yeah. <laughs> you need to agree. Okay. Go ahead, guys. From Zoom, you can also raise your hand, yeah? Any question, guys? Free lunch at home? Lunch. Okay, before we... Okay, Philips. Before we give you quiz, it's very hard. <laughs> Hello, my name is Philip. Uh, I want to ask, so you're a data science, uh, data scientist for um, Johnson and Johnson, right? I kind of want to know, like, what's an example of the kind of data you're given, and uh, 
what do you do with that data? And what, are, what are the different things that you basically come to conclusions with? Um, because it's kind of hard to basically grasp the way it would work for a pharmaceutical company. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Philip, for your question. Um, so I can't give you the details uh, due to confidentiality agreement with my company, but some examples could be, uh, as I mentioned, that pharmaceutical products are promoted uh, to not to patients, but to physicians. And there are different ways to approach a physician and different ways to promote a physician. So the data would be, you know, which physician did this product be promoted when and how it was, let's say there was an email promotion or there was a internet promotion or there was this webinar promotion uh, to promote this product. And we would analyze the marketing channels with, let's say, sales data to see the impact of the different channels on uplifting, uplifting the sales. So it's really, it's, this is just an example of sales and marketing, but it's really just to analyze the different marketing data and see how it's impacting our business through different data, data science, uh, machine learning models. And then using that to obviously propose a solution, let's say, okay, like if this is, if we approach this kind of physician uh, this way, let's say uh, you should talk to this person face-to-face, -face. you should also uh, talk to this person uh, through a webinar, you can promote uh, product through email, then we know what the best optimal channel to approach a certain physician and you use that uh, to make sure that there, the impact of the marketing is maximized. Does that make sense? Uh, it was just an example, but it's more about the marketing uh, data and sales data and how they, those two connect. Is it okay? Okay, maybe I have follow-up question. How messy the data that you handle? Um, actually, so my company is uh, is actually quite uh, good with data management. I know I mentioned that there's need for data uh, management investment, uh, but it's not as dirty as you would expect. Um, sometimes because uh, we have sales reps who uh, who promote these products, right? So they would kind of uh, self-report uh, their activity. And sometimes there's a bit of messiness, but uh, we have a data management team that kind of cleans it all to make sure that there's good quality data. So, so to answer your question, it's actually not too uh, messy. <laughs> Okay, thank you. Right, any other questions? Any questions regarding the, I don't know, any experience? Oh, Arish, okay. Hello, so my name is Arish. Uh, I just wanted to ask like, from, from what we have done until now in data science, like, uh, like doing data science and like all those graphing and all that is very like, uh brain consuming if that makes sense and like it's very tiring so like how do you deal with that like sometimes you work with like data and you're not going anywhere and all that how do you deal with the stress as a data scientist <laughs> thank you Arish, for the question um actually i i i enjoy the graphing and the data visualization i think <laughs> i'm the opposite of you maybe so maybe this is not the question that uh, I could answer, but uh, generally I go in with a hypothesis that I would like to explore when it comes to data exploration and kind of the preliminary analysis of the data. And of course, um, sometimes you hit a brick wall, like you don't know where to go. So you usually work with, I usually like to work with uh, many different people and kind of bounce ideas off of each other and then get advice on like what to do next. And for me, I guess the stress, I don't get stressed from making graphs and uh, doing data visualization because it's 
the fun part for me. Uh, but the stress of, you know, running the models and tune, fine tuning models and just working long hours is very stressful for me. So I try to make sure that I, you know, put in, put in breaks and put in different uh, ways I can manage my energy. And I also set expectations and goals and milestones to hit. So the ones I hit that, I am done. Um, because with data science, I think you can, if, with infinite amount of time, you can continue to improve it, right? But in business, time is limited. So you just have to do your best within a certain amount of time frame. And that's how I kind of, I kind of approach data science in business. It's just what can you do in this limited amount of time um, with the data that you have? I, I'm, this may not have answered your question, Arish, but uh, this is how I manage stress as a data scientist. Is that okay? <laughs> yeah, I think, uh, thank you for the answer. I think that's a good practice, yeah, working with the deadline. Yeah, so that's why in your final project, we create the milestone. So you know how to progress from that milestone to the other milestones, yeah. Don't keep continuing, don't keep continue working on improvement, right? So you need to know how to cut off your work yes. and you yes. continue again, yeah. Exactly. So yeah. guys, if you haven't submitted, please submit your project milestone, okay? <laughs> okay, any other questions? Yes, go ahead. Oh, okay. Say your name. Uh, my name is Kevin, and I have a, a one question. Um, we discussed earlier about like the skills that a data scientist needs, but what are the main important qualities that a person needs to become a data scientist? Like, how should they act, or like, what should they do to become a good data scientist? Thank you, Kevin, for a great question. Um, so, instead of the hard skills that I mentioned. Uh, before, I think some of the qualities that data scientists should have is really tenacity, uh, the, the ability not to give up, because I think, I think I reached, mentioned how it's very tiring to do all these like, graphs and making, like doing exploratory analysis and hitting brick wall. Uh, having that tenacity to just keep going and not giving up is an important quality to have especially with data, because you go in, obviously with large amounts of data with no answer, right? So you have to be able to tackle challenges and not give up and just keep trying different things and new things. And so just not giving up is one important quality. Um, another quality that I would have uh, for a data scientist is being able to communicate well. It's more of a soft skill. Um, I think I mentioned that, you know, as a data scientist, you're, you're gonna be very technical um, and there are gonna be a lot of people that you'll be working with who don't know data science and being able to communicate well with the peers around you uh, will be important to have. Um, to become successful here, because if you can't communicate, like it, 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 what, whatever you do, like no matter how, how great of a machine learning model you implemented, if it can't be communicated to your peers, it can't be used. So I think communication also key here to be able to be like a good communicator. Um, and as for the third one, sorry, I, I had it in the back of my mind and flipped, um, but being having tenacity, uh, being a good communicator, and also uh, curiosity, that's the last one. Um, being curious, right? There are so many different machine learning models. There's so many ways to implement it. Um, and being able to kind of, you know, ask yourself different questions and explore like the questions that you have and kind of continue to that learning process will benefit you in the future because things are always changing. There are always new things coming. There are always new algorithms coming. And you should always stay up to date uh, with data science and the hot topics of data science so that you can be really the best data scientist in the professional world or academia. 
So those three things, tenacity, uh, curiosity, and uh, communication. Right, thank you. Next question. Uh, okay, my name is Daryl, and I'd like to ask a question, which in, in a sense is an extension of Arish and Kevin's question. Like, you did mention that, um, be, being a data scientist, you're going to have to uh, possess certain qualities uh, or uh, certain aspects that, that could help you, uh, you know, progress better. So from that, I just want to ask you this question. How can you ensure that as a data scientist, your qualities can match the, the certain fields of occupation? Because and this is uh, the original part of my question, because you know, as a data scientist, you're going to have to take a lot of uh, information in. So how, how can the things you have actually uh, influence which field of occupation that you go to and uh, uh, where you're going to end up? Thank you, Daryl. That, that's your uh, name, right? Uh, thank you, Daryl, for your question. Um, so, you know, I think different industries obviously have different needs. And you obviously need to know that industry to be able to solve that business problem. But having those soft and hard skills that I mentioned, uh, you will have the foundation to start your career in data science. And obviously you're not gonna be perfect the, the first job that you get or the first internship that you get. It's a learning process and it's an experience, it's a journey. So, as long as you have the foundational skills to be able to really do data science, be able to apply and implement data uh, machine learning models and to be able to uh, process large amounts of information and also translate that into business uh, solutions, that is really your foot in, you know, like one step into this journey. And, different obviously industries have different challenges um, but you will learn as you go uh, through that company because I think as a new graduate uh, you won't know a lot about different industries and maybe you won't know a lot about the first company that you work at so just have those hard skills um, as your foundation also your soft skills and just learn throughout that journey. Um, and as long as you have the soft, hard skills and the essential soft skills, you will be able to contribute and you will be able to even experience more and provide value to that company. So it's, does that answer your question? I, I know you may have had two-part question, but I may not have caught the second part. Yeah, absolutely, it does answer my question. So uh, thank you very much. Yeah, thank you. Um, any question from Zoom? Can I ask Ria? You have a question? Because um, she's one of my students that very obsessed with UC Berkeley. So I told her you can ask question to Miss Yuka right now to asking about anything. Oh, please unmute. Mas Yoko. Or if you can uh, put it in the chat box, I can see that as well. If you okay, can't the committee yourself. would like to help unmute. Lisa? Uh, hello. Oh, yeah. Okay. Uh, okay. Um, hello. Thank you for the lecture. Actually, I found it very fascinating. So um, I actually plan on going to UC Berkeley for my master's. So I was actually wondering if you could uh, tell me how is like life in UC Berkeley? Like how? Yeah, how you study there, whatnot. <laughs> Just a general idea of how it's like. Oh, how it was like. Oh, yeah, okay. For you. For, for my experience. Um, thank you for the question. Um, for me, it was really the best four years of my life, I think. I had the pleasure of, you know, being able to study at one of the top universities in the world and being surrounded by such smart people was so inspiring. Um, and there are just so many smart professors, so many students, uh, so many smart students as well, and so many classes that you could take in undergrad. I think with graduate program is a little bit different, it's a bit more honed into your um, expertise. But uh, for me, I, the fact that I was able to kind of access 
different uh, classes outside of statistics uh, was great on really learning, uh, gaining the breadth of my knowledge. And um, I think because there are so many smart professors and smart students, uh, like any other university, studying is quite hard. Um, it was a bit stressful uh, when it was exam uh, season. I think many of you agree. When there's exams and big projects, uh, it's quite quite stressful. But a lot of the students, at least for me, were quite collaborative and they're very nice. So we all had like study groups and was able to study with other students and kind of make that uh, studying experience better. And I think I was able to learn more uh, working with other students. But overall, a great time. Like I, you, you would love it there. Um, the neighboring um, town, like the town Berkeley itself is very fun to be in. You're close to San Francisco. You're in the heart of Silicon Valley. Um, you can access all the top tech companies. So if you're really interested in, you know, being part of the tech scene, I think that is one of the optimal places to be in uh, because there's so many startups and venture capital. Um, so I, I, I think you would have a wonderful time. Uh, I know I said it was a little bit stressful, but it, it comes with any universities. But it was a great time for me. Did I answer your question? Sriya, are you still there? Yes, thank you. Okay. Okay, so that's about the life, yeah, in UC Berkeley. It's also very nice. Yeah. How's the weather in UC Berkeley? Great. Uh, very dry. So maybe not as humid as Jakarta or Tokyo. Uh, we don't really have like distinct uh, seasons, but uh, it doesn't get super cold. Maybe in like the 10 degrees, 15 degrees at the coldest. And the hottest would be like 30, but the humidity is very low. So, yeah, and it doesn't, it doesn't rate too much. Yeah. Okay. So guys, if you plan to go for further degree to UC Berkeley, yeah, that will be also a nice option for you. There is a data science program, right? Yes, or yes. In, in master's degree. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's very nice information. Okay, any other question? from the class. <laughs> um, hi, my name is Kim. So I guess I was wondering how the past delegation kind of works in a data science team. Because before you mentioned that you work with other people, of course, you have you brainstorm. So I was wondering if you if there's like a specific person who does like data cleaning or do you guys all do each step together? Uh, one by one. Thank you, Kim, for the question. Um, so currently, we have a data management team who's in charge of, you know, cleaning data, uh, making sure that there's high quality data um, that the data scientists can be used. So uh, to a short answer to your question, everyone has different roles. Um, so they kind of split, the, split up the role. And it's not like five data scientists are working on one project. It's more like one data scientist, one data management uh, specialist, uh, one business analyst, and one uh, strategist. So once the data scientist uh, takes the data that was cleansed and processed by the data management team, he will, you know, do the exploratory analysis, uh, implement machine models, etc., and get the output. And then once they get the output, that person, that data scientist will communicate that to like, let's say business analyst and a person working on strategy to kind of like kind of collaborate, like how the output can be used uh, to solve a business problem. So that's kind of like an example of how a project would work um, from day to day. But usually not everyone works on the same thing uh, together. Does that answer your question? Yeah, thank you very okay. much. Okay, thank you very much for the discussion session. I think we run out of time. Thank you so much, Yuka. But um, we take picture first before yeah, sure. we go for Kahoot. Yeah, okay. Guys, for taking picture, please go to next to the screen so we can take picture with Yuka together. 
uh, people on Zoom, you can open your camera so we can take photos together. Please open your camera, guys, on Zoom. Nice to see you, Shriya. Nice to see you, Calvin, Swardana, Angoro, Sandrian. Come on, everyone else, open your camera. Daniel, come and join us from Malang, Eriko. Monica, could you join us, please? Nice to see you. Eriko. Jocelyn. Yeah, the one on site, could you not? Could you good, good, good? Jude, join. Pak, Pak Ramon. Nanti dari dari Riva aja pak dikirim pak. Naik, naik, naik pak. Naik, pak. Uh, on the back, can you just? Nah, gitu. Ah, sip, sip. Ah, lovely. One. Three. Okay. Uh, Mas Joko, Zoom-nya dibuka. Uh, another one ya, guys, with people on Zoom. Mas Joko, screenshot ya. All right. Thank you, everyone. Okay, uh, I think that's uh, that's all for the discussion and lecture with Yuka. Thank you so much, Yuka, for your uh, presence yeah, online. Thank you. Sharing with us a lot of experience and suggestion for our students. So after this, we're going to have Kahoot quiz. If you still wants to join and see who is the winner, that's fine. If you have something else to to do today, that's fine. You can uh, leave the session. Thank you so much, Yuka. I'll see you again. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Now it's time for us to. Uh, having fun. All right. So as usual, maybe you already familiar with with this kind of stuff. All right. So uh, can we open the Kahoot and play it? Yeah. Just just play. It. All right, guys. So this is the uh, the one that promises by Miss Nurul in the poster, right? Okay. So basically, uh, we will have the Kahoot. Yeah, so there will be like a 10 question, right? Uh, related with our guest speakers and also the topics, yeah? And uh, with these activities, uh, please join with your student ID and name, yeah? If you cannot put your name, just student ID is fine, yeah? But make sure that we can identify uh, yourself. I mean, I, I can, we can identify you in, in our class, right? Okay, so the good thing is, uh, Everyone that joined this Kahoot will get like extra point yeah, for the activities. And the best part is the best five will get like e-wallet. Thanks for the program to sponsor us with this prize. So thanks for Mr. Jude. Yeah? You have Mr. Jude in here as the head of program. So he is the one that approved the, 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 the uh, benefit. <laughs> 
All right, so the top five will will get like uh, e wallet, yeah. Uh, maybe uh, the detail of the e wallet will will be explained uh, later, yeah. But only the top five, yeah. All right, so let's join, yeah. Please also put your name if possible, yeah. If not, uh, make sure that we can identify you because it will be uh, recorded. I mean, like uh, there's like a points for that for these activities. Yeah. All right. Okay, I'm expecting that there will be around 50 yeah. 50 students yeah. More? All right. Okay, so uh I just get in informed that uh in the Zoom there's also students uh, from Malang and also the other Venus yeah. So feel free to join. So it means the the prize also will be sent to you if if you uh can win into top five, yeah. Okay, I think the sound is really small. Yeah, maybe you can increase the sound. Yeah. Okay, we have fifty-seven at the moment, and still increase. No. Okay, everyone already joined? Not yet? Okay. So remember, yeah, if you win and then there's uh, we cannot identify you, it will be, uh, apa sih? Uh, cancel. So the, the e-wallet become mine. <laughs> Okay, we have 61 now. Can we start now? Everyone in Zoom? Okay. Okay, I think it's everyone ready join, yeah? <laughs> Why is it taking too long? <laughs> One person, one account only, yeah? Okay, let's count. Count down, yeah? From 10, yeah? 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Okay, let's start. Okay, this is the first question. Number one, true or false? To be able to work as a data scientist, you need to know how to code. <laughs> okay, I think it's already being discussed before, yeah? Okay, so... 52 of you already answered correctly. Of course, yeah, as a data science, you need to learn how to code, yeah? If not, it will be make your life difficult, yeah? All right. Okay, that's good. Let's continue with the next one. And before that, let's see the uh, score. Okay, we have top five. Don't worry. There's still nine questions. All right, thank you. Next, true or false again. Data science is applicable even where data is not applicable. I think it should be easy, yeah, because it's already self-explained. The name is data science, so it means you need to work with data, yeah? All right, so next, let's see the score. See, there's a lot of change. Okay, all right, so let's continue to the next one. How many zettabytes worldwide data by 2025? Remember, by 2025, yeah? You don't know, it is in, in our slide in the class, yeah?
Okay, the correct answer is 163. Okay, next. Okay, there's a lot of changes in, in the top five. That's good. Okay, let's continue. One of the data science challenges is Parma. In Parma is, sorry. Okay, the challenge is the limitation of available data, yeah? Okay, let's check the score. Okay, now is Duffy's leading. All right. Another question, how much is one data bar? One and the correct answer is one billion terabyte. Yeah. Okay, let's see the score. Okay, nice. Duffy still leading, yeah. Number six. Which university did Miss Yuka Okino graduate from? I think this is really easy, yeah. You see Berkeley, yeah? Okay, so let's see the score. Okay. All right. Davi is still leading. All right. Number seven. How big is data science job created globally by 2026? Two, one, and the correct answer is eleven five hundred thousands. Okay, let's see if the scoreboard is changed. Okay, it's changed now. <laughs> nice. Okay, number eight. Example of data science in manufacturing. Easy, yeah? Okay, let's see the score. Oh, that's quite far. Okay, number nine. Multi-select. So it means you can answer more than one, yeah? What skills are needed as a data science? Okay, <laughs> all your answer is correct, yeah? Of course, you need a business, yeah? Not only the technical things, but also the business. So you can uh, analyze the goal of your uh, data science things, yeah? Okay, let's see the, check the score. Oh, one more, yeah, sorry, one more. Tell me about what you enjoy most of studying data science, okay? have to write like you have like awesome lecturer yeah okay let's be problem solving data input collection okay and <laughs> Thank you.
Okay, so it means we know that what score that you will get, yeah, for this course, yeah. Okay, I think based on your answer, we cancel all the top five uh, wallet, yeah. <laughs> no, just kidding. Okay, all right. So I think for the last one, it's not counted as the uh, uh, as the part of the score, yeah. So let's see the final result of this Kahoot, and let's see the best five. Number three, Sha, who's Sha? Aisha, Aisha. Whoa. Number two, the. Raise your hand. If not, the wallet become mine. Whoa. <laughs> Number four and five. Which number four and five? Next. Five and six, yours? Okay, so I, I don't think you need the e-wallet, kan? <laughs> okay, don't worry. Actually, the, the list of the winner will be in here. Yeah. So, Clarin, number six is not counted, yeah? You can ask your friend to share with you. <laughs> okay, so this is the top five. Okay, so uh, what do they do for this? Okay, now next, yeah, before we we close the session, so uh, you need to uh, fill in the exit fo uh, exit form, yeah. So and also uh, fill in the attendance. So please share. The link. Okay, so ini masih di share in Zoom, right? Okay, so uh, everyone, yeah, both in class and also in the Zoom, especially uh, for our and um, my class and Miss Nurul class, yeah. This is the exit ticket event, so this is for everyone, and the other one is for the attendance, yeah, especially the one that attend in this room. Attendance will be in Binus Maya, yeah, for your class. Just check in. Session 12, you can, you can still. Until 12, 10, I think. Yes. Okay, nobody check in. You cannot. Oh, nggak ada ininya ya. Okay. Okay, so the 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 winner please send email yeah to us. Um uh, mention your e-wallet account number and the type is it GoPay or OVO? Yeah, send email to to me aja ya. So send email to here nunung.comaria at minus.edu with your number, yeah, and your e-wallet account. Don't contact me. That's mean. Yeah, we can give the prize to the next winner. Tadi <laughs> Carmen. Carmen, Philip, siapa lagi tadi? Si... Carmen, Philip, Alicia, who else? Peter. Who else Raisha, win Raisha. the Kahoot? One, two. Philip, Raisha. Karet. Only five. Only five. Raisa, Raisa. Asparaiman. 
The price, the extra price. Oh no, Mister Jut, Mister Jut. Bernard. Bernard. Oh, you're number four, yeah. Let me check. I think I. Send email, yeah. I didn't see your name. Send email your your account. No, no, just just joking. So there's no no Bernard name, only Bern. So it's not you. I cannot identify your name there. <laughs> okay, everyone is done for for the uh, exit ticket event. Yes. All good. Okay. Uh, before we close, is there anything that you want to deliver, Miss Nurul, or maybe Pak Jut and Pak Ramon? Okay. Don't forget your project milestone and today the closing of discussion forum. Yeah. Yeah, we, we, we will close the forum this afternoon. Yeah, don't forget, if you haven't post, just post it. It's supposed to be afternoon. Afternoon, yeah? Afternoon, yeah. Okay. All right, so... I think that's all, yeah, for today's session. Yeah, uh, is Miss Yuka still here? No, yeah. All right, guys. Thank you so much, yeah, for your participation, and uh, see you again next week in your class. Thank okay? you. Bye bye. Bye. Everyone on Zoom, we will end the meeting now. Thank you.